Milmead's pumping station sits in a shallow valley southwest of Stoke-on-Trent, just above the town of Eccleshall. And its purpose was to pump fresh water for the growing population of Stoke-on-Trent. And it's thanks to the members of the Milmees Pumping Station Preservation Trust that the station still stands and the engines are still here for all to see. The boilers and engines themselves are kept in working order and are run and demonstrated by the volunteers of the Trust. Without them, this would just be a silent museum. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Howard Moore. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Milmees Pumping Station Preservation Trust. Uh, Milmees was built in 1914. Uh, it was built to supply water to the potteries. It was built here basically because Hatton Pumping Station, which had been built a few years earlier, yielded good supply of water, so they knew there was good quality water in the area. The first engine was installed in 1914 uh, and then basically did very little pumping until after the First World War in 1919 and then in 1928 the second engine was installed. So we're now in the boiler house uh, which produces the steam for obviously operating the engines. Um, outside we have a, a hopper and the coal is fed into the hopper by a tractor. We then have an Archimedes screw in here which draws the coal up into two smaller hoppers inside. These operate on a, uh, a timer so the idea is that you get the timer set right so it feeds a little bit of coal in each time um, to, and maintains a nice healthy fire. So these are the, your two coal tubes with the, the screw feed inside and then this is the force draft. So by operating the lever we can actually change the amount of force draft that the, the fire actually uh, receives. So if I, that's, this is the natural draft from the chimney but as you operate the lever it actually brings the intensity of the fire up. Now the fire itself is not very long, it's only two or three foot long. The rest of the heating of the boiler is done by the hot flue gases which travel the length of the boiler, they drop down, travel to the front of the boiler, they then split and go back to the boiler again. So as well as heating the surface area of the tubes, you're also heating the underside of the boiler. In the engine house, Howard tells us about the engines in use at Mill Meese. The engines themselves are a, uh, a horizontal compound rotary tandem engine. So horizontal because the pistons move horizontally. Compound because it's a high and low pressure cylinder. Tandem because they sit one behind the other. And rotary because it has a flywheel which helps with the actual momentum and the running of the engine. The steam generated in the boiler room is passed through the wall into the engine hall and down to the steam chest and via the valves into the cylinders. pumps that then pump the water at the same time out of the tank to Hanchurch Reservoir which is another five miles and another 350 feet higher than here and they say they were capable of pumping three million gallons of water a day. How do we start them? Right, we have a little starter motor, we don't have a key and a battery so we have what's called a barring engine. 
and it's a little steam engine that was used to ease the burden of the poor people who had to start them. So originally, you had a downgrade bar which you stuck in and you levered the thing over to get it to top dead center. Now we have this little steam engine which has a gear that you see on the far side which you have to manually engage in the flywheel and uh, when the engine has been turned over once uh, we shall uh, disconnect the barring engine and with any luck the engine will then go under its own steam. I've got an apprentice today, he was missing yesterday, so he's going to do the sweat and the labour, I'm supervisor. Okay, so we'll have a go. Ready? Yeah. I will mop his fevered brow at odd moments. Big cheer for the apprentice, then. Once running, the engines do so with noticeably less sound than their beam engine predecessors. In fact, it's a very soft sound, which is why these engines are nicknamed the Gentle Giants.